Hello, my name is Mark Starr. I'm a medical doctor, and today I'm going to tell you how to both prevent and treat congestive heart failure. After this presentation, I'm sure you'll have many questions, and most can be answered by the following. When medical treatments do not make sense, the answer is always dollars and cents. So when I was doing research for this book, I came upon this case history from 1925, published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. A Dr. Farr uh, had a case of congestive heart failure in a 46-year-old woman with severe fatigue and swelling in her legs. Um, this is what an enormously dilated heart looks like. The little faint lines are the rib cage on both sides. These are the ribs and the heart takes up the whole rib cage, which it should not be doing. So uh, this was the initial presentation in October 10th, or October 12th, 1923. Twelve days later, the heart is starting to shrink, uh, and then about two months after starting thyroid, the heart is now back to normal size. You can see that it is only taking up a, a much smaller area in the rib cage. The ribs are much more easily seen. Um, so what did they do in 1923? They took the thyroid away and kept her in the hospital. And by February 1st, the heart is starting to enlarge again. And so this is six weeks after discontinuing. And by uh, March 12th, after giving her thyroid, five weeks after beginning thyroid again, the heart has shrunk into normal size. So they could do that back in the 1920s and 30s, and it was published uh, by Dr. George Farr. He was at the University of Minnesota. And I love this quote from his uh, medical journal article, the shape of the heart in severe myxedema, which is severe hypothyroidism, the medical term for hypothyroidism is called myxedema. And that's what causes congestive heart failure, and that's how you treat it, by giving thyroid. So the shape of the heart in severe myxedema is so characteristic that Dr. Rigler, the rentgenologist at the hospital, well, back, Dr. Rentgen invented the x-ray. And back in the 1920s, the x-rays were called rentgenograms. And instead of radiologists, they were called rentgenologists. So Dr. Rigler, the rentgenologist at the hospital, diagnosed the second and third cases in my series after examination of the rentgenogram alone. This was the last textbook that had before treatment and after treatment pictures regarding the thyroid and congestive heart failure. It was published by the president of the American Endocrine Society at the time, Dr. Lisser, and his colleague, Dr. Escamilla, were at the University of California uh, endocrinology clinic in San Francisco. And the lady was 46. You'll see all of her symptoms on the following page. She had a belly full of fluid called ascites. It, uh, fluid accumulates in the peritoneal cavity. And when I was in medical school in the 1980s, we were taught to stick a needle in there and draw off the fluid. Um, the heart is enlarged, enlarged. Um, after three months of proper treatment with thyroid, most of the fluid is gone from the lady's abdomen or peritoneal cavity. You can see the heart has normalized in size, and the colon is now normal-sized. So we were taught to give, uh, to draw off the fluid, give cardiac or heart medications and diuretics, enemas and laxatives in the 1980s, and I'm sure that's what they're still teaching. So three months of desiccated thyroid, which was the standard of care for the first half of the 20th century, resolved the problem. So they, these two doctors called her uh, problem internal myxedema. Um, she was 45. She complained of weakness, sore and stiff joints, slowing of mental and physical activity, impairment of memory, slowing of speech, dryness of skin, lack of perspiration, cold intolerance, loss of eyebrow and body hair, constipation, heavy periods, uh, anemia, uh, keratinemia, which is yellowish skin, enlarged heart. 
her metabolism, which is what the thyroid controls, was 41% below normal when measured at the beginning of the study. And it had normalized uh, by the end of the study. Oh, by the way, the prevention is the proper treatment of hypothyroidism, uh, which is what my book is about. And I have been using thyroid, as I was taught by an old MD, PhD, in 1995, who treated me, um, is the way they did it the first half of the 20th century, in order to learn all the details about how to prevent and treat congestive heart failure. You'll have to read my new ebook, How to Prevent Heart Attacks and Complications from Diabetes.